Hey, welcome back to another episode from Live on Living Well. My name is Richard and I will be your anchor for the episode this week. So, without much further ado, let's dive into it. The topic I have for us today, I call it Action Basels in Action. And the inspirational quote that I'll be open the message this week is from Honore de Bazak. Uh, what does it say? It was say it is easy to sit up and take notice. What is difficult is getting up and taking action. So this week we are looking at whales taking action or inaction have impacted individuals life in many areas and what to do about it so in my experience people are grouped into two certain groups those who take actions on their plans and those who do not so, my friend, which group do you think you belong to based on how you have been living your life? Are you or can you say you belong to the group that take action or can you just group yourself to the group that do not take action? So, you often wonder why some people like to talk about their dreams. Uh, almost 90% of people like to talk about the past or the future. They like to tell you what they would like to do, but the only one reason why they are not able to do it, it could be because of the money or because of the environment. So, you ask yourself why people are so much trained and they did not do anything to manifest it. So you often wonder some people like to talk about their dreams but hardly do anything to make it materialize. So the worst part for me is even alarming. They self-sabotage through their actions. They take actions that actually kill the dreams and the goals that they have. Or they decide not to take any actions about it. So it is important to know that there is a difference between taking the right action and just reacting to your emotions or what is in the moment. So this week in this podcast, I would like to illustrate the disparity, the benefit of right action and downside of not taking action. I hope that by the time we bring this podcast to the end, you may be able to get one or two things that we encourage you and inspire you to begin to take action. And if you're already taking action in your life, I would say well done and congratulations and make sure that you're taking the right action. Sadly, it seems only 5% of people actually do take actions on their dreams and goals, while the remaining 95% do not judge by the outcomes. So, what has come to hold these people back is a more negative thinking, like deep fear of failure. You'd be surprised that someone refused to take a job because they already think like they're going to be failed, so they turn it down. Or someone complaining that they were single and when they have the opportunity to meet someone they do everything to sabotage it whether they didn't turn up or they arrived there talking about what they've lost in their life constantly 
or the constantly reaching out, sending the text to the person every few minutes so that the person will not forget about them. So what is behind that behavior? Their fear. And that drive them to actually sabotage what they said they want most. And perhaps low self-esteem cannot be ruled out. People that are heavily lean on perfectionism tend not to try if chances of not doing well and being success is not permissible to them. If they already think like no matter what they do, they're going to fail. They don't want to try. So this is surely when in, for example, in IT department, every time they acquire new systems or develop a new system, one of the biggest concerns is how the user is going to be recipient to it. And you will find different kinds of users. There's people that are very open, optimistic about it. There's some people that are very skeptical about it. And because what they're currently using is not working well, so there's no point for the new one will work well. So that people take extra energy, extra resources to bring them on board. So back to the message. Ali, can you see any successful individual today that won't have series of setback of their own? But taking actions will not only create an opportunity to open many doors, but excel in them to reach their dreams. You will be surprised because in naturally, People only want to focus on the good story. They want to magnetize to success. So why is it that everybody wants to be the friend of a successful person? But the catch is, it's not the crown that they actually put on their head that you should put all your energy. It's the process that transforms them to who they have become. We should never spend all our energy focus on what we achieve. We should focus our energy on who we become in achieving what we have. And it's the process that we go through that we tell us, make that happen for us. I am a great fan of setting goals. And I do it by setting goals daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. And then I also put the lower effort in taking actions. One thing will happen when you embrace a way of living or this approach to everything. One thing you begin to notice, you'll be able to able to take right actions because if you have it in front of you that you want to double your income so how do you do that is that you double your hour for different employer or the same employer which is very practically difficult things to do it's impossible because you have 24 hours you can't just do eight hours or seven hours in one place and move to another hour doing nine hours. No, you become more creativity, becoming spending time to what is exactly that you really want to do, that you do not need to burn too many of your time to do that, and you put your energy into it. You don't just arrive from work and the next thing you do is switch on the TV and you watch TV until you go to bed, or you wake up in the morning. And you just grind on your screen or your phone and browsing and browsing until your battery is went off. You spend your valuable time on your dream, on your goal, on the thing that you wanted to bring to your life. If it's your goal is to double your income, you will take the action that will make this happen.
If it's to triple it, you will also take the action that will make it happen. It is important to write it down. Don't have it on your head, don't have it on your mind. When you can write it down, you can say it. Believe, trust me, it is going to make a massive change in you. You're beginning to become more accountable to take step or action that will make it happen. Sometimes when I show people what I've wrote, even five years ago, and it's already happened right now, or what I wrote that will happen this year, and none of them has happened, but the, the key thing is where that goal now is even more closer to what I wanted to manifest than in the beginning of the year. And if I didn't set a particular whether financial growth, whether personal growth, whether career growth, whether spiritual growth, if I didn't say that goals, it is impossible to measure around it. Even if you are not reached that goal now, you will never be in the same place that you are when you make that goals. But if you put it in your head, now it's so difficult to have a focus more than 10 minutes. And within one day, you will be driven to another thing, another thing, another thing. So it is important to write it down and set a clear and achievable timeline. The benefit is simple, but the advantage is enormous. It is feasible and measurable. You may not have achieved the exact goal but you will have significant move above your initial start. Let's say in the beginning of the year, your goal is to save 5,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds or even 500 pounds. If you start every month saving certain amount, I can guarantee you that even if you don't meet 5,000 pounds or 500 pounds at the end of the year or 10,000 pounds, one thing will happen, you will have certain amount already saved for that particular year. Someone was told me, I asked them, how many books do you read a year? And they said, I ran one to two two to three books a year. So I said, oh, welcome to the club. You are belong to the average reader. And they wanted to know what did I mean? Average reader is over 70% of the population read one or two books a year. And they said, oh, I don't have the time. I said, no, you do have the time. So we break down and they realize that they actually have extra six hours every day apart from their work and the family, or apart from the sleeping hour. So what did they use for that six hours? Oh, they realize that. Today, that individual read averagely 13 books a year. It's amazing. Sometimes we don't realize how capable we are until we begin to challenge our existing beliefs, our existing way of life, and try to embrace a new paradigm to it. So, my friend, Taking the right action is also uniquely distinct from taking any actions or inaction. Let's look into inaction first. What are the reasons for inaction? So these are the questions I ask myself when I'm putting this podcast down this week. And I look into some people that I've met and 
they give you so many reasons why they couldn't do what they wanted to do. But when you look into, if you look beyond the reason they gave you, it just in action. They paralyze in taking any action by allow themselves to be overthinking about the outcome. So, what can you do to change it? We are disadvantaged when we know about ourselves from responsibility blessed upon us. Take for example in the area of politics. When people pretend politics do not concern them, what happens? They allow poor politicians or and even dictators to rule freely. What then happen to us? They damage the societies and the community fabric broke down. Ruto put it much better. He said, if you are not interested in politics, then your inferior would rule you. We all know, we can see it in our world today. The leader we chose are very, very important. And the people that are also governed by this leader, they are also very important to be more active about every politics of the nation. If you care about environment, don't just think about it. Think about what can you do to make a difference. If you think about poverty, don't just leave it alone to your politicians to make a change about it. Think how you can make a difference. Even if it's so tiny, you got to take a action. You got to do something, not just thinking and thinking and thinking. I'm not going to tell you what exactly you have to do. You do know what you is in your heart to do. What action have you taken to make that desire, that wanting, that need that's in your heart? What about in your personal life? It is important to first seek to take responsibility for your own well-being. Many have isolated themselves from their predicament and are waiting for an extraterrestrial to rescue them. Some culture believe that always there's external forces responsible to the dilemma they find themselves. Sometimes the environment they live might be so harsh. They tend to blame every supernatural power upon everything that happened to them. They can all feed or eat. Yeah, it has to be somebody else's fault. They blame the government. They blame their government. They blame the society they come from. They blame the family cause. They have so many things to blame, but the only one thing that they don't blame is themselves. Even some culture even encouraging hopelessness and beating wood in this way. In some culture, this belief is so strong and only those who have liberated their mind and belief do often make a jump from this paradigm. So to bring this podcast to to the end, lastly, few people realize that they can shape their own future or have influence on how it turns out. In technology, the one of the great advantage of technology is that you can actually predict the future how because you build the system that follow it up. About 20 or 30 years ago, there's a prediction that we not just use a, a laptop to just type and do some work. We also use it to communicate. 
as a prediction that we come to a point that our phone will become a computer that will be have so many processes that can process so many stuff that you can not only just talk to your friend you can listen to music you can listen to radio you can even do recording film through your phone i'm doing this podcast through my phone i do not need to also invest on a gadget to do that separately but phone wasn't able to handle this thing 25 years ago so in technology people that work in this environment able to predict what the future will be and they will develop the product that match their prediction me and you might not be able to do that because many things that we have no control on. but only one thing we always have a control on is how we react we have a free choice to choose whether we become very destructive or we become more productive in how we react to the situation we find ourselves we can predict what kind of reaction we have regardless of the outcome we find ourselves if you chose to be happy it is your choice and you make it as intentional regardless of the circumstances outside of you because that most of us have no control about it we have no control about how the government policy is going to affect us we have no control about decision or indecision of the current government we make how is that impact on us you have no control whether your children will sick or not sick whether your husband or your wife will live or stay but how you react to it we determine the kind of action that you love to take or in action that you refuse to or you decide to follow so and it can take us anywhere we allow it to really experience the things that we have in our mind in the physical world we got to take the actions and we have to take the right one the right action may include ability to design designment take time to research on the area or learning or understanding that we wanted to acquire study our education is not finished when we finish school we continue to learn is that learning through the work or learning through formal school or learning through by self apprentice you could make yourself to develop a new skills you could watch so many free youtube video that are relating to the field that you want to develop skills on and you can put yourself to a mentoring class to help you all these are right actions and because we think about what we have to give sometimes we don't do it or we try to avoid it or procrastinate which is another way of sabotaging ourselves or in some cases, our own challenges or demons might need a counseling, someone that can actually help us to deal with our psychological barrier. Because some of our own individual barrier may not always be a physical one. It might actually be more psychological or emotional one. And not everyone can help you. You might need to take courage to seek a counselor or behavior change which is very difficult to do when you get to certain age but it doesn't mean that it cannot be changed but once we realize that our behavior doesn't serve us it's actually an obstacle to our growth we should be compelled to change it oh yes traveling these are another right action We might not have the money to travel long distance or we might have other things that money is taking off but there's nothing wrong to actually sojourn to your neighboring community to have a view 
even within the country that you live. If it's safe for you to do, try to explore it as, as much as you can. You meet people that are coming from the same community, the same country or different tribes or different community. Talking to them or even observing how they live their life may create some kind of insight for you yourself to appreciate your own life in a way that you never do for a long, long time. Walk. Many people or some people don't really like what they do. They complain a lot about it. Instead of complaining about your work, look at the thing that that work has contributed to your life as well. It gives you a sense of purpose. What I mean by that, you're able to pay or contribute your own share in the community, in your family, in your home. While you have that job and you are also open your mind to look for a job that contributes to your own happiness, you may not be able to forget that you're spending certain time of your life in that work that you cannot get back. And it's important to try to put things into perspective. Partnership. Sometimes it's faster to go along. But when you go in partnership, you can go far. So look for someone that actually much better than you in particular area that you want to develop and if they are open and happy to work with you work with them iron sharp iron you say with times with years you become as good as you didn't imagine that is possible so what is more important is to start somewhere stop overthinking where to start just start somewhere even though you do not have any control over what may happen to you in the future, you do have control how you react to it. I hope this podcast helps someone, though I overshoot it by five minutes, but I have much to cover this week on this particular topic. If you like to know more about Life for Living Well, you can check it out on our website at www.lifeforlivingwell.com. We have some of the books that may be helpful or something that you would like to read. Please check it out. And if you like to send me any question, you can write me at hello at lifeforlivingware.com or you can directly just feel contact me through our website form. Until we meet again next week, stay safe and ciao.